Hui Puyong, greetings and welcome to Wachari Nation Building Monday Live. We have the trees to uh, fulfill the contracts that we already have. Every time God show me a plant, I can see that plant everywhere. We are descended from a people that have always been independent. Basically, it's 34 uh, plants that we want to return um, to be cultivated in the different communities. Wait, Guyon, and welcome to Wachari Nation Building Monday Live. It's my pleasure to be with you. I am Ifashina Efenyemi. Welcome. Wait, Guyon, good night. Welcome to our viewers, our fans, our supporters. And as per usual, I'm Marley Tatuya Nunes, and we start off with a music video from Elro. Not the music video this time. It's just a music with a picture clip from Elroy Martinez, Garifuna. Garina Kuka de Sasu Serepe, Epe Ali, Uri Arapo. Garina Kuka de Sasu Serepe, Epe Ali, Uri Ocha. There you have it from Elro Martinez. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's the first time you're hearing that one, Ifa, but it's first a very really smooth and soft one. You know? First time, first uh, time. First you know, time. you know how to pick them, Marley. I say this all the time, <laughs> and um, I love the message. It is exactly mm -hmm. what, again, what Chari stands for. Because he's questioning right. what we are doing as a people. Why aren't we going to the farm? Why? Why aren't we preserving this precious mm -hmm. tradition that we have as mm -hmm. a people? And um, so it's a very, very appropriate message. And I'm I feel good to be involved in in an enterprise and an effort that is about answering that very question. Correct. So that we Correct. as a people get back mm -hmm. to what is truly us as Garinago. So excellent, excellent choice. Mm -hmm. And he, and he don't just him, ask right? questions, you know, even um, like throughout the music, he starts saying, giving us options, like telling us, you know, giving us choices, roads that we can take. So, um, I mean, it's it's about time that music, you know, speaks to us, to, you know, prompt us to mm -hmm. be active and get up and do what we need to do to get out of this hole we are in as a people. So very good job on that one, Elroy. Yeah, very it's new. Job. You said right? It's a new piece from last him. last year. From last year. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's still new. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So tonight we're gonna keep on the mission that we're on of nation building through our tradition as Garinogu, and that is in farming. Tonight mm -hmm. we are going to be talking about Lemuru, and. You know, we've had Doc on the show talk about a wide selection of herbs and plants that 
are traditionally ours. But these sessions, she's been more concentrated and very deliberate in talking about specific plants and what, how good they are for us, how we can grow them and all that good stuff. So Doc, mm -hmm. we go yeah. on and welcome again to the Cherry Nation building. Always a pleasure to have you here. I'm sure this is going to be also a very informative session as always. So good night and welcome. Good night, everybody. Wait to Welcome, Doc. Yeah, it's always uh, the power of three, right? Just us three. Mm -hmm. um, this plant has eluded us for so long, um, and you're going to hear with the different names why it's remained such a mystery. It has all these names, and people think they're different plants, but we're going to see tonight that it's really just all the same plant. Namura, we believe it's it's um, we believe that's the girl from the name. Um, maybe somebody out there knows what the ancient word means. Um, the other names that this plant has that also sound uh, very enough, and and you will see that as we go along. Uh, it's an honor to be able to share this plant with all of you. Let's start at the beginning. For those of you who haven't recognized it yet. And this is an herbaceous perennial plant. Uh, it means that it it grows all year long and it reaches a height of about maybe three feet, no more. And it's indigenous to Africa and has it been uh, naturalized in other areas like the Amazon, Central and South America, the tropical areas of Central and South America, and of course the Caribbean. Everywhere people from Africa went or were sent to, this plant grows and um, because Africa was made up of many nations with many languages, the plant is known by many names throughout all of its native territories. And here you go, garlic weed, garlic bush, anamu, guinea hen weed, apacin, apacina, apasote, desoro, apocin, ave, ave terinae, nate, Caluchin, Chaser, Vermine, Congo Root, Duvant Duvant, um, Emeroma, Emeroma, Garlic, Weed, doesn't Emeroma sound kind of dark enough? Garlic Weed, Guinea Hen Weed, Guinea um, Hen Leaf, Gully Root. Um, well, you get the idea. Yerba de las Gallinitas, Huevo de Gato, Kojo Root. They're from all over the world. Um, everywhere this plant went, Indigenous people have been using it for that long, that in every village and region and, and place where it grows, it has its own uh, special name. Mukurakao, Ochano, Paiche, Pipitipi, Berbena, and so on. You get the idea. So the way um, we demystify these powerful medicinal plants in our tradition is by giving the kind of criteria that uh, you can't go wrong. Once you know this about a plant and you find it, you can be sure, okay, this is the plant we're talking about. So that's what we're trying to do here. So I'm calling it Lemuro ID. The first thing you're going to notice, uh, even before the flowers and seeds, so the dark green leathery leaves, that when this plant grows, the leaves grow big and they grow close to the ground. Unlike other plants where the leaves grow at the top, first you get a nice little stalk and then the leaves grow at the top and spread out. With the Lemura, they tend to grow at the bottom and spread out. And here's a good look at the leathery uh, texture of this plant. Once you recognize Lemura, you will recognize it from anywhere, from an airplane. So these tall spikes um, are the flowering, um, the flowering stems. <laughs> they are lined with little small white flowers. They don't really have an, an aroma per se, but the entire thing smells like garlic. And I'm just gonna get you a close up of uh, the flowers. This is them in a bunch. And that's another stalk uh, right there. They're quite gentle, very delicate, almost lacy like The entire plant leaves uh, stems, sticks, seeds, flowers, smells like garlic. 
especially the roots though. The roots are far stronger and the roots are actually um, holders of very special medicine. Now, the Lemuru um, is, I think, believe the second plant we've talked about where we use in medicine and magic or, or spirituality or the other realm. And we use it in, in herbal baths against uh, witchcraft and negative energies. This is all indigenous cultures where this plant grows. This is the history of the plant, okay? So the when there was bad luck or, you know, just someone feeling heavy or things not going right, then a bath was prepared with these leaves. Or you have to include these leaves in that kind of bath. Uh, we, in, in our very from the tradition, we use it in the agony. Uh, our bath for spiritual cleansing. But we don't stop with just the body. In, in, in the Garifuna tradition, the Lemuru is used for spiritual cleansing all over, whether it's objects, um, a bus, a boat, a car, your home, your body, uh, a space, your farm. It's, it's for consecrating grounds um, in that way. Um, so we just generically say it's for a spiritual cleansing. The roots now, the roots are stronger than the rest of the plant. Um, the roots, what we do is we mash them up and they release this, this really strong garlicky um, aroma, but in it, it has uh, all of the medicinal properties in the aroma, all of the medicinal properties of the Lemuru. So when you inhale it, it actually um, is used to heal sinus problems. Uh, the leaves we use in a tea, you take it uh, for colds, for coughs, and flu, or any, any of those ailments that are going around now. Now, because of the power of the roots, you can crush the roots into a paste, like make it like a pulp, and you can apply it topically to a headache. It's mostly an analgesic when, when it works like that. So the, the root has the pain relieving uh, properties of the plant in a greater strength. So that's why we use it that way. So you mash up the root, you can rub the juice where there's pain, but traditionally you pretty much put the whole pulp of the plant, whether it's the headache or a joint or anywhere else in the body. Now, um, just make sure I'm in the right place here. So I was um, trying to find some material that you all that I could share with you that you could look up and maybe further the study yourself on this particular plant because there's very little information out there and the information that you find is, is is not as trustworthy but this particular public publication the healing power of rainforest herbs that is um, one book that has uh, accurate information about about the Lemur. so uh, traditionally we do use it in in as in I don't want to say tribal medicine, um, ancient healing traditions. We've used Lemur for cancer, for all kinds of cancer, but scientific evidence only credits the uh, brain cancer and breast cancer, but the other types of cancer is good for immune disorders, um, to stimulate immune function, to promote immune cell production um, against colds, flu, and viruses, um, fungi, right? Yeast infections and urinary tract infections. Now here's the fun part. Uh, these are the properties and actions of this plant that have been document, doc, documented by research. <laughs> it's analgesic, which means it's a pain reliever, which is why you can use just the leaves in a pulp or or this, the roots, which are a little bit stronger, as a pain reliever. It's anti-inflammatory. I work kind of in the same way, but you could also take it as a tea. In a lot of ways, depending on the strength and the frequency, uh, you can use it as an anti-leukemic, antibacterial, anti-cancerous, anti-candidal, that's a, the uh, yeast um, candida, antifungal, anti-protozoal, anti-tumors, you get the picture, antiviral, and um, I repeated anti-candidal, and an immune system stimulant. It's a COX inhibitor, which um, is a non-steroid uh, anti-inflammatory, and that's the anti-inflammatory feature of this plant. This is a bush plant that grows in every garifuna village 
And we use it maybe for one or two things, but it's, it's good for all these other things. And our ancestors actually used it for all of these things. But along the way, we've lost some of the, uh, the knowledge. So the common... Go ahead, go ahead. I have a question for you, that Yes. Because you, in, you've talked about some of the other herbs that have similar... Yes, features are similar. Um, mm -hmm. they, they can be beneficial in the in the same way as this one. So when when we would use these traditionally, would it be generally as a combination or just this by itself? It depends on which illness. In the bath, you it's mixed with other plants and, and we really don't share that it's kind of proprietary for the for the the people who hold that that gift uh but it is a main ingredient um so if you're going to have a bath that's the one herb you you, you cannot not have mm -hmm. um it really depends on what it is you are addressing like for example we use it spiritually uh, our men use it to wash the fishing boats, the canoes, like to clear them spiritually after a fishing trip so that when they go back out to sea, the boat is clear of all sorts of heavy energy or the deaths of the fish or the blood or whatever, whatever it caught out in the sea. So it clears um, objects energetically. But for us, it's been the the vehicles that we use across the water, canoes, boats, dories, and so on. Um, nowadays, we're powdering things, we're mechanizing, so you can actually take the Lemuro powder and put it in capsules uh, and take it like that. I don't know if I answered your question, Eva. Yes, yes you did. You did. Okay. Thanks, Bob. Okay. And what's so, in the bottles? Oh, okay. You want to know what's in the bottle? Yeah. Try to sneak it past you. Okay. So these bottles are the old-fashioned infusions, where you, you put the herb in um, some filtered water that you know it's not going to have bacteria in there, um, and you let it sit in sunlight. The way we recommend is that you pour boiling water into the, the mason jar glass, a nice sterile glass with uh, water. Uh, filled with herb and you just let it steep right that you're not boiling the herb you're just letting it steep so that's pretty much the infusion part there is a concoction which is the same idea except that it's in a pot and you're cooking it longer mm. you're cooking it longer that you get more out of the medicine and i mean out of the plant but it also depends on what it is you're trying to do how much you're, you're trying to draw out of the plant um, so the recommended traditional remedy uh, is 30 grams of dried herb, um, whole herb in a liter of water. So that's a quarter cup to um, half dosages are taken one or three times a day. So, so it varies. If you have a lot of wiggle room, uh, it's good to work with an herbalist or one of the, our elders who are familiar with this plant. Uh, we can use it topically depending on the condition. Now, all the medicine in Lamuru is water-soluble. Remember, we've been talking about oil plants. There are certain mm -hmm. plants where the medicine is transferred better when you uh, use it with an oil. But with Lamuru, it's water-based. It's a water-soluble plant. So the powdered leaf or the dried leaf um, is the best way to, to take it. And again, one to three grams, uh, which is about two capsules or so daily you can you can take that you can take it as a capsule or you can take it as a tea mm -hmm. okay so those are the the different dosages it's, it's hard to find some like straight up this is the way you do it kind of thing nobody wants to take the risk of saying this is how you do it so i wanted to um, discuss contraindications because this conversation would not be complete um when they say that Lemuro is dangerous for pregnant women. They're talking about the methanol extracts. When the medicine for the Lemuro is drawn into an alcohol, that is not how we use it traditionally. 
Traditionally, we use it in water because that is the way the plant taught us because it's water soluble. But if you're using tinctures, laboratory tinctures or methanol extracts, that, that's not the way the spirit taught us. So we don't use it that way. Uh, and science doesn't, the medical profession doesn't recommend it for pregnant women. It's contraindicated. Also, uh, people taking uh, blood thinners. Lemuru is a blood thinner. It contains coumarin. Coumarin itself is a blood thinner. Uh, it's low concentrations, but if you're making a concoction, you're going to get a, a little bit higher concentration. So if you are on that medication, you, you just check with your physician because the Lemura will potentiate the effects of, of coumarin. And potentiate means it'll, it'll make it act more than it's supposed to. It's not the Lemuru acting up now. It's it's the medication that you're taking that's affected by the Lemuru. It's not the other way around. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, people on blood thinning medications should not use this plant without the supervision or advice of a qualified healthcare practitioner. I don't want you to think that this show is a, a substitute for you uh, taking care of yourself with the right people. The other thing is that it does tend to, um, we use it traditionally to, to, to the lower blood sugar, to control blood sugar levels. So people with hypoglycemia and diabetes um, should really be careful when they go onto a protocol with this plant. Now, there are a lot of people in villages all over our communities that use this plant to control their blood sugar, hypoglycemia, diabetes, or any of those imbalances. Uh, and they do it very successfully. So what we suggest is that you look into it, do your own research, study this plant, find out about it, talk about people who have had success with um, treating their elders with it, and uh, let's keep educating ourselves. Of course. Thanks so mm -hmm. much for sharing that, Doc. This is, um, this is very, as always, this is gold mine. There's two gold more slides, thing. I think. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just... I'm just um, Thank impressed you. with with all that you mean we look at these plants we see them in our communities and it's like oh it's just a plant for some people they were as far as they, it's bush mm -hmm. not even knowing recognizing how important this bush is so yes tell us about about growing it yeah i was gonna um show you a little baby lamour but it's too dark outside right now it um it grows really easy. And if you don't understand its purpose and its use, it could get to be a nuisance. So it's good to know about the plant uh, before you go growing it, because it will give you a lot. It grows from seed, from stick, actually from any part you can grow this plant. And it has a long, long root, like a small laboral plant, it has like a two foot rib and it really grabs into the earth. Um, so it's really hard to pull out. The best thing is to get the little babies that grow around the big mama plants and pull them out when they're really, really young and then grow your plants from there. Here the seeds, look how tiny they are. And that's not even actual size. I mean, they're really, they're these little things here, right there inside that. Okay. So they're extremely small, but they will stick to you if you go by any Lemuru plant. So you don't have to worry. Just go touch a Lemuru plant and you'll get some seeds. It's that easy. And uh, I think that was it, right? So you would have to use the scissors. It doesn't work from cuttings. You can. You can grow from cuttings. You can. But it, it just grows from seeds so easily. Um, but the most powerful, most direct way to grow Lemuru is by pulling up the babies around the strong uh, plants. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And, and then, then you, you just can take those and plant elsewhere. Yes. Yes. Yeah, you can put them in a cup in your garden, wherever you put it, that plant is going to be so grateful. It's a very grateful plant. So I'm very eager to hear what experiences are out there with the moral. I want to hear from everybody. So that's, yes, that's it's, it. it. <laughs> it's pretty quiet tonight. Um, it's pretty quiet tonight, but I, I do would I do encourage that indeed that people would share with us their experience. Mm -hmm with this particular plant. It is in our communities. It's quite um, quite popular. Oh, so we have a comment uh, from my mom. 
it's good for toothache, she said. Ah, I'm sorry I said that. Yes, I forgot. Yes, it's good for toothache. It's so true. Yeah, the sinus and toothache. Yeah. yeah. It's good for the gum. She's right. Even for babies when they're teething, right? Yeah. Yeah, she would know. It's good for, for your sinus. I've had that experience yeah. with the sinus. Yeah, when I was a kid, uh, I got hit on my nose and I was having a bad smell. Even my mom could have smelled when I'm breathing. Wow. Oh, you had yeah. a sinus infection. Yeah, it takes it yeah. right out. Yeah. yeah. So and just mash it up and have me sniff, sniff it, sniff it. And then I start blowing out all that hole and that hard, like, blood-like out of my mm. nose. And thanks yeah. for reminding me, Marley, because it is, then, we use yeah. it for nosebleeds. You're right. Mm. It's good mm -hmm. for nosebleeds, too. I remember that. My brother yeah. used to get nosebleeds. So I That's never forget that plant. plant. Oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah. This this plant is no joke. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it is. And I see traditionally also it is normally planted by on the corner of the house. There's a, a reason for that too. Room. There's a reason for that too. That's for protection. Yeah, right yeah. Uh, over the grandma under the grandmother's window. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, was gonna right. ask. I was gonna ask that because you said you know we know it's in the, in our communities, but mm -hmm. some of the these plants they tend to be in particular locations. Yeah, yep. mm -hmm. in our mostly under the house. With, with, either. with us, it was slightly under the house, over to on the right side for some reason. Yeah, with the old lady's room, and so where that that first mm -hmm. bedroom that looks out <laughs> when you get punished, you know, when you they send you in there, um, the room that looks out. Um, yeah, it's usually in that in that side, and, and there's a reason. There's definitely a feng shui aspect to having a lemuro in front of your house. We do a similar thing with base, with basil. Mm -hmm. this, uh, this is similar it Ruda, is the Ruda, is Ruda treated the same way too? Actually, it, um, oh wow, Marley, you always do this. No, no, <laughs> but but it's uh, you. You're opening up a can of worms. The Ruda does the same thing in the back of the house ah. people plant ruta in front of the house and what happens it always dies and watch you, you're gonna you're gonna get comments people's ruta mm -hmm. plants die all you have to say oh you planted it in the front of the house yes hey ruta <laughs> from my from the time i learned about so clearly um this is so we know the next show is gonna be on ruta clearly See, you're making me work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ruda's you ask for this. <laughs> you ask for this. Let let oh, let it boy. be known. You ask for this. This is no, your I love gift. It. I really love it. But you know, uh, growing up, knowing all this stuff, I used to spook people. So it kind of, I have to do a double take when people actually want to hear this. These these are our spirituality plants. No one has ever wanted a conversation about our spirituality plants no one has ever wanted to know so this is very new it's it, it, it's a it's an odd fit <laughs> because i don't know if you're going to throw stones at me burn me a, as a stake or um you know take no, my this license is away that kind of, this is not that kind of space that, <laughs> it's not that kind of show you know, um, i think that people who come here come with that the kind of consciousness they they come with this same vibe that's why they're interested mm -hmm. And um, and maybe if, if people just come out of curiosity, it's still it's still something that is wholesome and positive, because mm -hmm. we have benefited one way or the other. Somehow we have benefited, even if we're now in a mega city somewhere, or we are not accessing these plants the way our ancestors used to. The mm -hmm. thing is that. Do these plants impacted our ancestors and mm -hmm. we share their DNA. So essentially these plants have impacted us, even if not directly in this generation, because we don't know about them. We're not in our communities. We're not growing them, but they have affected us one way or the other. Now in this modern time and in a space like this, we have the opportunity to be introduced even if we don't didn't know before we now know you show us the images we can see 
what the plants look like then you tell us what they're good for so there's there's no reason for us to remain ignorant because you're giving us all this this awesome information and now it's just up to us to put that information to work and the good thing is that you know we can still some of us still can relate thankfully yeah. there are people that can relate still I was just gonna say that the my all my laboro, even what I have here in Mango Creek, came from Tati Paul's fence. And I know that's the fence between Mami Asinta and, and Tati, right? So I don't know if you have Lamoro from there, but you don't know how many people have Lamoro throughout Belize that came from that yard, from that it, it was a dividing fence, right? He had a live fence mm -hmm. and it was all Lamoro. I don't know if it's still there, but We've got tons of Lamora that came from there. And we give it away freely. Yeah. But I think that everyone, I, again, I encourage everyone to grow this plant. It's very easy. To, it takes care of itself. You don't have to do anything but allow it to grow there. And and you'll have healing with the leaf, with, you know, with the root. It's just great medicine. Is this one that, um, I don't know if what the word is for for. Mm -hmm these type of plants that smell once Ar aromatic uh-huh yeah, once you come in contact with it it's 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 one of those that smell it's an aromatic but it's not a uplifting aromatic it's a, mm -hmm. it's garlic <laughs> mm -hmm. it's a different a well different... some people like garlic you know that yeah. some, people, <laughs> some people like garlic <laughs> it, it is it's extremely aromatic and it's medicine it's yeah that's true it's medicine is inside its aroma so the, they're called aromatics because they deliver medicine in their aroma so just mm -hmm. smelling the plant actually brings medicine into your body that's that's mm -hmm. why it works with the sinuses mm -hmm. i love this plant i love it um, when you smell garlic in those baths, the agony, it's it's supposed to be the lemuro, but we have lost touch with it. Uh, so we use other substitutes. Sometimes we actually use garlic. And the other thing is gifiti, by the way. Oh. Um, people just started using garlic because it was easier. But man, when you taste the gifiti that's made correctly with the lemuro root. Mm. Yeah more potent more everything it potentiates everything yeah but if you're pregnant and if you're in coumarin you can't you can't drink the more yes yes uh -huh. yes so i see um mommy added something about the ruda she's hot today that, huh? <laughs> that is yes <laughs> i i call her the 21st century grandma right oh yeah so oh, yeah. um and that's to show us too you see i'll we have all the, these generations represented here and it's you're never too old i mean mommy is 75 you, and no. you could be you could be operating the devices and participating in the discussions and it's not like back in the days yes we would be in the yard and talking we're on facebook and talking we're on Streamyard and talking we're on youtube and talking but we're still talking, we're still sharing, right? And that's mm -hmm. the that's the blessing right there. Um, so she's saying that eyes can kill the Ruda, just people ah. looking at the plant. Mm. So that must be why we don't put it in the front of the house. Because it's, it's okay. yeah, the more eyes, okay. she's right, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So it's hidden in the, hidden in the buck. Yes. Not many eyes on it. I know right. from when I can remember my grandmother and all the grandmothers, the Ruda goes in the back of the house. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. So that's a, but, so that's it. That's your next assignment. Doc. Okay. But also when that when that plant dies, it it's done its work. It doesn't just die. It dies mm -hmm. because all of its life has been sucked out to protect you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. We 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 are in a we are such a powerful people you know i'm telling you it's yeah, telling we can't you. stop having these types of discussions that this is this is so so important like i i say every show this is so so important and all is not lost when we think about 
what cultural erasure is the the fact that people living generations of different practices and beliefs things that they ate things that they grew things that they made lose them over time because of modernization because we don't have that cultural reproduction taking place because of the gender gap there's so many things that are impacting us that then cripple us from passing on these traditions to each other but the very same things that have distanced us are also there to bring us back because that's what we're doing we sh we're showing it right here that yeah we're not going to the villages we're not sending our children to villages for the holiday anymore i was just telling my mom about that so how will young people learn their roots their connections if they're not being sent back to the village to visit with family to know who their relatives are that used to be a conscious thing for us that but our we parents participate. our parents participated the parents of these young ones today are not participating so we see the, we see where the gap has happened and and so it creates it creates a void now to fill the void we we are blessed to have access to this technology because while we might not be visiting the village so we're not getting to see the plants in their natural habitat but we're still getting to see it on our screen mm -hmm. and very vividly this is not like you have to you have to guess you could always when you do see something that looks like it mm -hmm. all you have to do is pull it up smell it on the screen you smell it you listen to you go back to the video you say oh let me look back at that particular spot yeah. oh this is it let me compare and boom you got it it's you know it's right there literally at yeah. the palm of your hands so i'm emphasizing this because I want especially our young people to know and to see that all is not lost to us. All is not lost to us. And spaces like this are crucial if mm -hmm. it is you're truly interested in not losing what we have. Because we still have these. We still yes. have them. Yes. You know? Mm -hmm. These are not myths. You could actually go out in the yard and take these pictures of these plants they're still around you can still walk around our communities and find them you wouldn't have to just rely on google right or buy them on on the internet or from some trader on the highway you don't know yeah. how many people have come to me and say oh i i bought a ruta actually i bought a ruta i bought a ruta i bought a ruta great and i said i bought you one too and they brought it to me and it wasn't a ruta at all <laughs> oh no <laughs> You know how they say quacks like a duck, looks like a duck, but it wasn't a duck. Yeah. <laughs> this, but they were excited. This they were excited. They were excited. Yeah, I have yeah. never seen a plant that looks like a ruta, <laughs> but it, it just had no aroma. And that was the key. This person didn't know uh -huh. anything. You know, it looked like a ruta, but it had, what, for whatever reason, this particular plant had stopped producing the aroma. It wasn't a um, uh, but it's good to know what the criteria is. I think this is one where we empower each other to continue the tradition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Well, we already have someone looking forward to the okay. Ruda show. They want mm -hmm. to learn more about the Ruda. Really? You get yeah. me in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and um, another another comment is talking about the name. And what they learned about the neem and the, fl the flagrant flowers of the oh, fragrant flowers. And, lilac. The and um, now they do have one there and it's flowering. So now they're enjoying that awesome fragrance. So, you know, you know, another thing that oh. we might have these plants around us, right? Mm -hmm. And we're not paying attention because, mm -hmm. you know, we just don't know. We're not walking in gardens with our mothers or grandparents so we just mm. we're, we're ignorant but here we come mm -hmm. here's a show like this we got we have these discussions it's just like being in neighborhoods sometimes and maybe passing a particular tree 
for years without noticing. You pass a particular plant for years without noticing. Mm -hmm. And then you learn about it, right? So when you learn what the neem looks like, <laughs> all of a sudden you see all the neem trees. Oh my goodness, there's a neem, there's a neem, there's a neem. Uh, moringa, oh, there's the yeah. moringa. When you learn about the Walelama, oh, that's Walelama. There you see, right. that's what Marley said. You see it everywhere. Yeah. You see them everywhere. Yeah. I remember when I first got my got my ruda plant. I got it from out of my mom yard. Mm -hmm. Um, well, she didn't know the name, and she just explained to me what was the use of the plant. Mm -hmm. So I I break a couple branches off and I brought them home and I planted it. It's when Doc explained to me what the plant was. Is then I realized that everybody have this plant. Like a lot of households have this plant. In the on the corner of the house um then i asked that if there are different species because the one she showed me had a darker leaf than the one that i have and that was telling me well it came from paul's yard and it was probably because of the shade oh, but then i smell it yeah yeah, then I smell it. I said, but it smelled the same. So it's the same plant. Yeah, that was a lemuro, wasn't it? That that one yeah. was a lemuro. Yeah. Yes. 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 So. Yeah. Sometimes the leaves are paler or smaller because there isn't enough nutrition. Right. Um, or different kind of food they fed them. You know? mm -hmm. But you're right. The oil, the essential oil in the plant, is the same. It's just yeah. as strong. Excellent. It's good so to grow your own. Not for a lemuro. Who said what? <laughs> What'd you say? Yeah. I don't think I know Lemuru, but who knows? Maybe I'll see it tomorrow. <laughs> they won't identify themselves, huh? Yeah, because now we now we now we we've enlightened. You've enlightened. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it will be it Definite, will be noticed. Definitely. Next time you see that plant, you will know exactly what it is. It's and then all the, the test, stick on the you test also. Is, it yes. smells like garlic, right? The test smells is like that garlic. it smells like garlic. Yeah. It smells like garlic. You know what I wanted to ask the elders is, is um, can we use it in cooking, I wonder? You know, because it's got the, the oil, it's the same oil and garlic. It's like the exact same agent. Hmm. So maybe it's a way, the way we flavor food with garlic, because I always felt cook garlic is medicine, right? So when we're cooking with garlic, mm -hmm. we're literally cooking with medicine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a that's a good question. I hope we can get an answer for that one, yeah. because this is the the only this one when you you've talked about it, it's only been medicinal, whether yeah. spiritual or physical medicinal, but not, not food. Yeah, this I one doesn't that. have the food. Aspect. We're not hearing teas, teas and and using using dishes, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah, that that would be that would be very good to to find out as well. Um, so Doc, I want to keep you here. I don't want you to go anywhere. All right, tie me up then. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we have some new developments in Wachari. You know, we're we're doing a lot that our audience doesn't know. And so I just wanted you to give some insight and updates about what we've been so busy doing mm -hmm. uh, at Wachari. Oh, wow. I'm so glad Marley's here because he's yep. younger than me. He remembers more. Um, we just completed the oil press training. Well, first of all, if you look at the screen, you see the upper. It could be left-hand side or right-hand side, depending on. You see the the hand here uh -huh. with, with, with uh -huh. the, the oil drop? Um, that's our new uh, registered logo. That is the Wachari logo. That is our, it holds our mandate of Al Buamurunu. Mm -hmm. uh, it holds our vision that an open hand can both give and receive. And it holds our economic development determination to produce oil By hand. Yep. And, and, and other derivatives, um, other products from our crops. Mm -hmm. So we're very proud of this logo. Um, the training was, was it four, four days? See, I didn't take the training, so you really shouldn't ask me. Keep going. Marley oh, took the training, Marley and, and a few other guys. It was really wonderful. Uh, the gentleman who um, actually invented this this press or 
put it together uh, and gifted it to Wachari, really. Right. So that we can have the capacity and technology to press the quality of oil that we wanted to. We had our standard, but then we could not afford, we did not have the finances to buy such a sophisticated uh, machine, such a sophisticated piece of technology. Mm -hmm. So this particular investor said, here, if you guys can rise up to this occasion, I'll send you the machine. So they arrived, there's two of them, and a few groups of youth. There's certain conditions, which are still from 17 to 37. We still, it's an age group that we're working with, especially the young men. Um, and they and they showed up. So Marley, tell us about it. So they came, they yeah. learned how to press oil and all of that. Did you yeah, get pictures? Um, yeah. Um, well, if I pull a stunt on us here, we got a couple of things that lined <laughs> this up. This is, I feel, I feel, I don't know. I don't so, even know um, what the word, bamboozle. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, um, the 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 guy who designed the oil press, he came down and gave us lessons on how to service the oil press and how to operate it. Right? I'm very grateful for Marciesa Matt. That's how we call him. Um, very grateful for his work. Um, yes. So the presses, Ifa. I'm telling you, Ifa, the first drip of oil. I stole it. I'll be honest. You stole it. I oh! took it off. I took it off the the machine as it was mm -hmm. coming out, and I rubbed it on my it. skin. No, I rubbed it on my skin. He, to it's, smell it's it. in his body. It's in <laughs> his body. <laughs> Let me tell you something. To smell what they, it. What they did. They. <laughs> you see that boy there with by the oil press in the picture? Did you see his hair? They put yeah. moringa oil all over their hair, all over their skin. <laughs> And they were fascinated because the oil gets absorbed. Yes. So, and, and it gives your skin this glow and this health, but it's not greasy. Greasy. It gives your hair yes. this bounce and this shine, wow. but it's not greasy. So they were the oil first is amazing. Yes. The oil is amazing. Yeah. So um, the guys were telling me um, when I get on the bus, because it um, when it's fresh, it, ha it have a scent. Yes. Mm -hmm. Before it rub, it have a scent. It's like a nutty. Right? That, that yeah, that everybody will smell me. But when I <laughs> got to the bus and I smell the scent was gone, but the skin is still glowing properly right? grease. You know, and so yes, the guys they took it and they all put it in their hair, <laughs> they rubbing it all over. Um and then we taste it also. We get yeah, to taste it's it. It's edible, of course, right? it's edible. We get to taste it. Um what I got from the training that's really um what I can't forget is um when when the oil is it's cold press, right? And there's a heat that's added to it. But when the oil comes out, it's not hot. And you can automatically catch the oil and bottle it. Because it's not hot. It's like a, on a temperature that doesn't I don't know I don't know how to explain it, but the temperature well, it, of the it has oil. a cooling. Yeah, it has a cooling. Yes. Uh, space, yeah. right? Um, but it's it comes out of heat. Yeah, I don't, I, I I can't explain it, but I I well, don't understand what I'm trying to say because she said. It. No, it's so, good that um, you can't explain it because we can't give away <laughs> our intellectual property. <laughs> yeah, so the picture that you are seeing there right now is a guy doing servicing, putting um a little bit of oil on the in the press to keep the machine rolling. Right. Um, the guys, they were really, you know, focused on learning how to operate the oil press and servicing. So we get to do it on our own, like putting it up um, together, then taking it apart, greasing it, you know, no, um, understand how the seeds um, get grind and crushed. Um, all, all of that Matt told us and explained to us and he gave us a chance to look deeply into the, um, you see, like the, how to call it, the, the part there that holds the seed, the red part to the top. You looked in there and see exactly how the machine wrap the seed and take it to get pressed. So all that, you get a first hand look at it. Then you can more understand how the seed is pressed, right? Um, then all the little adjustments, you get to learn why you adjust, how to adjust, when to adjust, right? So, um, 
I want us to start pressing oil. Marley, I hope you were taking I notes. Me I too. Did. I don't see any notebook in that place. We we all take notes on our oh, okay. phone. Everybody was. All right. Yeah. I'm so, so proud of all, all of the you. parts, the names of the parts and everything. We 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 got it. Right. And um, the thing is that it, it makes everyone employable. You have a brand mm -hmm. new skill now that's very unique. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, now, when can we expect production to begin? Look at that. Well, a very good question because what we should be talking about, especially on this show, is the need for the Wachari farmers to start delivering their seeds. I understand why we don't have them now because the pods are still green, but as soon as they start browning mm -hmm. to um, collect their seeds and start bringing them into Mango Creek, they, they know where we are. Mm -hmm. um, the family is really complete. You know, The organization mm -hmm. has really come together and all the moving parts are now moving together. Yes. So we, we're going into yes. full throttle collecting Moringa seeds. I'm also looking for other seeds that you might know of that produce oil mm -hmm. um, that are around here. So maybe the mm -hmm. things that we haven't thought of, um, definitely looking at mame seeds, um, sabudi. Mm -hmm. So um, about maybe if you have 10 or 20 pounds of the sabudi seed, but it's the inside part the um the white part you know you break the wood and it's the inside part so it would be yeah, maybe yeah i guess yeah sabuti seed at the um training and it's full of oil it was my seed first of all and you all took that it was your seed without my permission <laughs> yeah but and then you pressed it and by the time i oh, it was oil by the time you looked around it, it was oil in their squeezed. hair and on their skin all the oil out of my seed all of it <laughs> we, we pressed every seed that came in front of us just to try out I'm the sesame seed. I'm protecting my from you. <laughs> uh, but but sabuti oil will be, it's a very specific, it's, a, it's, it's very specific to our culture. Um, you know, it, it's an ancestral smell. It's something that we're all familiar with. And just about every community has sabuti trees on them. So it's easy. Even the kids can pick it up. Just pick up the seeds, um, shell them, or you can bring them, you know, unshelled. I think we're going to go places. So it's yes, not just it Moringa. Sounds, yeah. It sounds yeah. that way. It yeah. sounds that way that and I, I'm I'm excited about it. And we we're really making strides, which is this is what I wanted to see. You remember from last year I was saying this. Okay, so where's the evidence? Where's the I evidence? Know, right? I know. We're talking uh -huh. about this uh -huh. stuff. Where's the evidence? And see, it's coming, it's coming Slowly. alive, yeah. and people yeah. can see, and the pictures are there, and the evidence is there. We're having these sessions. People are going to training. We have the equipment. We're doing stuff, and now it's it's really coming to fruition because mm. the demand is now here. We have the equipment. Oh. We need the raw material. Right. I forgot we did fulfill the order. The hundred pounds of jackass bitters. Um, we we purchased jackass bitters from the different farms, mm -hmm. and just about every Garifuna community got to put some of their jackass bitters in there. I haven't sent the shipment out. It goes out next week. So the only one I'm missing is the one from Barranco. And we really look forward to receiving the Barranco mm -hmm. um, contribution to this shipment. Because our dream is to have a little bit of jackass bitters from every uh, Wachari community yes. to be delivered to Canada. And yes. they're ordering more. So it's, it's, it's good. So it's we good. have complied with that. It's a little bit scary. Uh, a lot of the farmers made a lot of money because we're buying. We're not just asking you to bring them. We're buying the seeds from you. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you have the seeds, we talk money. If you don't have the seeds, relax. Do something else. Yeah. No. <laughs> learn how to grow it. Nope. Yeah, nope. but learn how, don't hold it right now. Five look, back, years, okay? look back at the shows. It's right there on Facebook. Go to Wagia. Go to YouTube. Exactly. You know, mm -hmm. learn read about the, it. Start buy growing. The record, read the book. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, this is great. This is tremendous progress that, you know, Wachari is truly moving forward. And yeah. it's just a matter of us getting on board, you know, getting on this, this moving train. It's moving. It's moving. Yeah. So we yeah. all need to get on it, start growing, growing our herbs. We're yeah. teaching about it because we want our people to be growing them. We have use for them. We can use them, of course, personally in our households, in our families. But there is also economic development. There is economic yes. opportunity. 
from mm -hmm. having these herbs. And that's what Wachari is doing, is making sure that we're using our tradition to build us economically. Yes. What's a no, nation I mean, without economy, right? right? Exactly. You can't be a nation without right. economy. You said it, Eva. You said it. Amen. Yeah. So just like that, Doc. Oh, no. I'm leaving. I'm turning off just, my, my just, camera. <laughs> just like that, Doc. We're, we're, we're pretty much out of time. We're going to hear, of course, another awesome bit of music from um, Marley's mm -hmm. selection. And that brings us to the end of our show for tonight, uh, our Lemuru show. And we're looking forward excitedly Ruda. to the Ruda show for next mm -hmm. week. So yeah. let's all come here and be a part of it. Uh, mommy said that the mm -hmm. Lemuro, another name for it is the Guinea hen root. Yeah, oh yeah, the Guinea mm hen. Yeah. Yes. So That's it's it's around. It's it's in it's in my yard. <laughs> Thanks to her. So it's here. I have it too. <laughs> I'm so happy she's on the show. I just I feel like yeah. oh. <laughs> you never miss the show. She's you know, always she's there, you know. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thanks, all right thanks, so, and thanks yeah. to all our our Thank all you. our viewers Sorry. our fans our commentators on the ceremony mm -hmm. well hold Everybody. up hold up we have a youtube channel and if if, if 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 you want to do something for us please mm -hmm. subscribe to our youtube channel yes and like it go through all the videos this is your homework you want to support with Jari? go through all the videos and click like okay yes and then you go right to Right. Love you all. Ayo. 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 So um tonight we're closing Who off with Mr. Rama's song Mehi Magambu. And I say good night. Ayo. 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 Hugs. Bye.